you're all you thinking, when, when are we going to start this online thing so that I can sit at home and nobody make fun of me? <laughs> all right, automatic pitch change propeller is what we'll talk about now. Automatic pitch. This is a Compers aromatic propeller. And in past years, I've gone into great detail about how this little thing works. And we had an example and it was really cool, uh, but I'm not going to because the FA doesn't require you to know this anymore. And it's really kind of a specialized little propeller and it really works kind of funky. Um, but notice something really cool about it. And I don't know if I can do this well because I have to do it freehand. I think I did a pretty good job. Those lines are parallel, are they not? That is not parallel to that. And that's one of the, the design functions of this is how, uh, how all of this interacts. Uh, but it, it, it changes pitch automatically based upon aerodynamic forces and engine loading. And it doesn't move in a perfect, um, it actually kind of moves in a very strange way, which I can't really duplicate. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's kind of sad that I don't have the prop anymore, but there's no pilot input. There's no oil to it, just some counterweights and aerodynamic forces that make it go. So what can I really say about it in just a few minutes so that we don't, uh, hang on, we'll go with one, one, the aromatic, I hate aromatic, Jeez, guys are full of it tonight. <laughs> The aromatic prop automatically changes pitch in response to operational forces. Uh, this place is, this, this, T-H-I-S, this place is the best load on the engine for optimal performance. This place is the best power load on the engine for optimal performance. What do you think I mean by that? Because I really don't know. What's, I'm hearing it. Didn't quite follow that. Say it again. <laughs> okay, that, that's fair enough. Uh, what kind of load do I want on the propeller for takeoff or takeoff or climb? Oh well, yeah, let's go with pitch. I want a low R low pitch. What I hear RPM? Low pitch, high RPM. The prop's automatically going to do that. And so then I get to an altitude and I level off and pull back some power. What's it going to do? Higher pitch, lower RPM. So it's just we're doing it all on its own. All on its own is what I meant to say. I'm going to move this. You everybody caught up? So I can see I'm near the end of my space. So there we go. I, I what? I don't know where I'm at. At high power and low airspeed. So I had high power. At to high power and low airspeed, such as climb, uh, prop is in low, prop is 
at low blade angle. And at high airspeed and moderate power. Prop will be at high blade angle. I've never flown with one, but I hear they work really well. Because then the whole idea of governor and everything basically becomes obsolete. It doesn't, because it won't hold the RPM. Okay. And you can't select anything. Okay. So you're at the mercy of what this thing wants to do. So like I said, uh, about a year or two ago when I was doing some research on this, what happened to the prop, somebody actually bought this company and is actually still making them. But I, and I believe he was fighting with the, or I shouldn't say fighting, let me rephrase that, it was working with the FAA to get uh, <laughs> approval, but I don't think it was working out or something along that line. Could be wrong on that. Uh, let's see. Um, the pilot has no input or control. the prop. Uh, my next point, due to advances in constant speed props, aromatics are pretty rare but still used. So. Because why? If I, you lost a counterweight on anything, you'd be in, you'd be doomed. Let's see if we can find. Let's see. Oops, K O. No M. It's coppers. There we go. We are servicing home-built aircraft only. There we go. Should we try operation flight? The stability of the aromatic propeller is obtained by balancing the pitch decreasing effort of the aerodynamic force with the pitch increasing effect of the net centrifugal force acting on the masses of the blade and counterweights. I told you. So takeoff pitch decreasing forces are the greatest. Uh, what is a pitch decreasing force? Let's dissect that. Centrifugal, centrifugal force. Okay, centrifugal force. Our greatest and will therefore move the blade forward to low pitch to permit the engine to develop full takeoff power. During climb, maximum power is made available due to the fact that the blade pitch increases as the velocity of the airplane increases. So as we also know that as the velocity increases, what happens to the angle of attack? Decreases. Okay. By maintaining a given cruise RPM, constant power, the engine is available at altitude up to cruise critical open throttle altitude. So there you are. Yeah, we used to have one that looked exactly like this, and I do not know what happened to it. I think it, well, it wasn't carbon fiber, but... Uh, Maybe it went on the back of it. Yeah, that looks really nice, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Is he taking a selfie? Uh, yeah, let's just say wind speed because he's a pilot. <laughs> 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 Selfies in aviation. Kevin, can you stall a propeller? Sure. I would think so, yeah. Yeah, anything over about 15 degrees was about a stall. But I don't think you notice it, and in <laughs> flight, I don't think you can. Unless you're doing aerobatics. Yeah, then you'd, uh, let's see, what are, what are my costs here? Blades only, blade and hub, so 67.50 and up. So somewhere between 67.50 and, I don't know what, 67.55, let's say. 
All right. So that's really all I can say about the coppers. K O P P E R. So I got to change that. Oh, I did. I went into all kinds of stuff. Theory of operation uses natural forces acting on the blades and counterweights to achieve proper blade angle. Center line of yeah, center line of the prop is behind the center line of the hub. And then that made four. Lots of repeat. I'm not gonna give that. But yes, I really went way into depth. Uh, that page, that page, that page. <laughs> that page <laughs> that page uh, maintenance and inspection what do you think it would be come on you gotta be ready for this one inspect make sure the prop is actually installed properly okay <laughs> it is the same come on what's what's the easy stuff what? Corrosion. Corrosion. Chips. Paint. Cracks. Paint. <laughs> so be ready for that at all time. Uh, the blades on this one, they should actually move freely by hand. They move very easily back and forth. When uh, huh? When it's loose. No, it's actually, they, they, they move. Really? Yeah, that's uh, the whole thing. Oh, Cause, so the, the blades are very easy to move. Click, they actually... So they have production inside? Nope. It's... Moved, uh, Yes, there is a pin in there that, that there's a so synchronizer. Yes, you cannot have them uh, offset. So the mush, they should move by hand and also they should feel the same. So, And there's a synchronizer in there. So uneven movement can be bad bearing or a synchronizer. Uh, lubrication. The hub does require an oil supply that must be checked every 100 hours or annually. So now when we get in any kind of hub like this, always look for hub leaks. Hub leaks are a big deal, and they can indicate where, where, so if I have oil inside of a hub and I have oil leaking out, what can that be an indication of? Cracked crank, bad seal. Bad seal, not a crank. Cracked hub. Cracked hub. Oh. Some props even put dye in the oil so that you can see it better if the hub has a crack in it. So. Uh, all right. Does it also indicate like loose fittings? Does oil coming out loose fittings? It can, yeah. All right. So I think that's all I need to say about that one. So we got ground adjustable, then we had automatic, now we get into controllable. So let's look at some controllable pitch props. Well, that's right. I really did get into this. So remember, I knew it's somewhere I'd put this sideways because it makes more sense sideways. So uh, because it's actually what's going on here. So centrifugal twist is always going to make it go to a low angle and aerodynamic makes it go to a higher angle. And I believe this is in the, the book that I gave you guys. So you can see how it's actually out of alignment with the, with the center line of the props. And so it, like I said, it's got a weird pivot of access. It's not at all what you think. And that's why it talks about being forward and back. And, and again, we don't really need to, yeah, that's not a bad picture. So yeah, it actually turns about uh, a range like that. So it's really kind of a neat thing. And we could spend the rest of the night even talking about it. There's your synchronizer inside that keeps them doing the same thing. But uh, we're going to skip that. So anyway, what we have here is a controllable propeller. And we talked a little bit about this, uh, what, two weeks ago or something or last week. What kind of, anybody remember the kind of prop this is? It is electric. Who made it? You guys have short-term memories. There we go. I say Juan should know this. Beach, beach Roby propeller. Um, similar, it's a little bit similar to the Aromatic with this steel hub and these wood props. 
me see what do we got. Uh, uses this external motor. And remember I said even the ones before this were not electric. They had a little crank inside. And so you turn the crank and that would turn this gear. And the gear is actually stationary, even though this is all rotating around, which then is going to drive a mechanism in here that will change the pitch of the props. Because at first, if you think about it, well, if this thing's rotating around, boy, you're going to need some long wires, aren't you? All right, so. Uh. <laughs> All right, so, but here's what's, uh, so this particular example right here, this does not have the, mo the electric motor. This is really just a little, uh, like, speedometer cable in there. And so, remember, this is all stationary. So, this is a bearing. And so, that bearing is going in there with a little pin. And that little pin, well, sorry, the pin right there, pin goes into the little slots right here. That is a pin. So, pin there, pin there. It goes into little slots. And as this moves, it is going to push this forward or back. So this part's stationary, bearing, inner race. So this is allowed to move. So this is allowed to move. It's spinning around, and it's spinning around with the propeller, which is then actuator pin is set inside of the actuator arm. So that looks like it's um, in the middle, but that wouldn't work. So as it moves forward, it's going to then change the blades back and forth. There we go. I think that's kind of cool. So. There's the stationary part that's going around. This is spinning this way, which is allowed to spin right in there. And as it goes forward, it moves the blade forward or back. Follow? It's really not a big deal. I think it's kind of cool. What's the downside to this? Well, okay, there's more moving parts. Okay, I like that. So if you're not flying straight and level, you want to change your blade angle. Well, it's not a constant speed. You're just adjusting for blade pitch. So I think about it, you're getting ready to take off. So what are you going to dial in? High or low? Low blade angle. All right, so a low blade angle. You dial it in and or a little switch. And so you got your low blade angle to take off and you start climbing. And you may want to leave it that way if you're climbing. And then, uh, I don't know, you level off. And, well, then you pull back some power and then crank it the other way. So it's just going to, you have to, it's two different levers that you're working at all times. Um, not that you don't have another level for constant speed, but you'd have to constantly little, adjust that little thing for corrections that you make. I shouldn't say constantly, but, but still, you know, not a bad thing. So what do you see? Kevin, how does it work? Because I know my dad's electric prop on his VTL had an automatic selection. Is it electric with automatic? It's an electric prop. Yeah, I don't think it's, but it's automatic? I think, I'd have to look, it's been a long time since I've looked at it. I'd have to look at it. I thought there was, because there was high and low, and I think it was automatic. Hmm. Well, I, I could see that it wouldn't take a lot. I have to think about that. I'm not familiar with that particular one. Do you know that one, Juan? If you could attach an electric governor to this. That one, I don't know. Unfamiliar. Find out for me. See what he has. If you can. And we'll, we'll find that. Uh, controllable pitch props. Controllable pitch props allow the pilot to select a blade angle within the props design. So... Controllable pitch props allow the pilot to select a blade angle within the props design. Maybe two position. Or multiple angles. Uh, 
And the one we're talking about here is the beach ruby. Construction, well, it's similar to the aromatic. With wood blades and a metal hub. We've got bearings in the hub to allow blades to rotate. So not only that it's the one bearing that I showed you, but we also need bearings in this area right here. Let's go back to this one, or even this one. But you need bearings in this area, going around the hub, or some sort of bearing surface to allow the, the blades to rotate as well as we had a bearing going in this way that allowed the hub to rotate while the gears here stayed stationary. So metal hub, bearings and hub. Allow blades to rotate. And it uses an external gear assembly for pitch control. And we had a mechanical crank. or electric motor. I don't think I'm going to make you guys write down and go through all of the, the operation of this. So they're antiques and I don't think you have any Q&A questions on them. Probably aren't going to see it on your oral practical, but yeah, it's a nice introduction of just how kind of things work in there. So what, let's think about this. So operation, let's go down to, we'll call this here, maintenance. What kind of things you think for maintenance and inspection? Come on, third time tonight. Let me think about that. Corrosion. Corrosion. Hannah's got hers down. Installation. installation. What kind of things are we going to look for on installation? Why do you think this thing is, is put on the crankshaft? What kind of crankshaft it looks like this goes on? Splined. Splined, okay, because of the big nut up here. So what are we going to be looking for? What kind of, what's the safety look like? Okay, cotter pin to one of these holes right here. So it's a pin with a cotter pin on it. The pin goes from the inside out. Uh, how do you think this thing is lubricated? Oil, grease. Grease. All right, that's going to become a big deal, grease. <laughs> a lot of mechanics have ruined a lot of propellers with some grease. Um, you can't just keep greasing these things. Uh, so you have to be very careful and follow the directions exactly on how you grease propellers. Because if you just think you're going to stick that in there and start greasing it until grease comes out of here, uh, on a lot of props, you're going to create some significant problems. So don't do that. Uh, what is that piece on the hub? Here? That is a grease zerk. So it takes a grease gun, and so that means you put the grease gun on, the little hose that fits on that, and you pump the handle on the grease gun, and it's going to force grease into the hub. And I bet you there's one right over here on the other side. Yeah. 
because where there's one, there's two. I think it's on the Q&A, actually. I, couldn't, I didn't know what the heck a Zerk was. Oh, okay, that's a Zerk. And I want to be careful about There are some props and even some procedures in the past whereby what you were supposed to do, it has two grease Zerks, and you're actually supposed to take one out and pump grease into one until it came out of the other that you just pulled out. And then you put the grease cert back in. So one of them's really just acting as a cap, and the other one is the fill port. And that would, um, in some props, that's what you do, is you actually then pump grease into here until clean, water-free grease comes out the other side or moisture-free grease comes out the other side. And that's how you'd re-grease and push out any moisture that collected in the prop. But, so it's not, like, forcing or pressing. It's right, it's not forcing or pressing. You have a nice flow for it to come out of. Because if you start forcing and pressing with a grease gun that has a lot of pressure, you can blow out the seals through here. Then you blow out the seals through here, guess what? Centrifugal force tends to want to take the grease all the way down the propeller and fly over the windshield. Maybe someday when I'm not recording, I'll tell you a very funny story. It's funny now. What? Did I f hang on a second. Did I forget to start it? I did not forget to start it. You forgot to pause it. All right, so we're back. Uh, let's see, so maintenance. All right, so, well, all right, so I have to put the same as everything else, same as everything else, same as all other props. Cracks, nicks, tracking, loose bolts, safety, excessive blade movement. So I guess we're adding a couple things, excessive blade movement. What's excessive blade movement? So, well, okay, now when we start getting into props that have a controllable or movable uh, blades that are going inside of a hub, you actually want to kind of grab the blade and try and, and see if there's any movement fore, aft, up and down without moving the hub. So if you're getting a lot of relative movement, and some blades have movement, that some, some is normal. Look at your maintenance manual for each one. But if you start to get a lot of relative movement between this blade and the hub, then you got a problem. Right? You don't want that. So you got to start checking that. Yeah. I believe I did, but thank you for asking. There we go. You're a good guy. Looking out for me like that. All right. Uh, so we had uh, blade movement and uh, control cables. So maybe this time we're going to want to lubricate control cables. So make sure you check. Go away. So we had tracking, blade movement. Um, what else did I say? Control cable. Control cable. I just saw some article on the ABS website. It talks about uh, oil being critical. About what? Oil being critical? Yeah. Okay, oh, yeah, it is. Every 100 hours or so, the owner should take oil with a can and a long spout and a few drops of oil to the two light pins. To the guide pins. Yeah. Huh. Oh, and so that will freeze a problem. Okay, so we got lubrication becomes critical on all the props now. They're going to start moving. Uh, what do we got here? All right, well, that's probably a good place to stop because tomorrow we'll start talking about the two-position Hamilton standard, which now starts getting into using engine oil, which is where we're going to spend most of our time.